Hey folks, as some of you might know, I recently took over support and updating of a script for Roll20 called Power Cards. This API script lets you create macros uh, to make nicely formatted output for attacks and other abilities for your PCs and monsters. My first major addition for Power Cards was a visual effects system, allowing the built-in video effects in Roll20 to be triggered from a Power Card macro. I've extended that functionality by adding the ability for video effects to be played based on attribute references on a character sheet and done the same for audio effects. The ability to play audio effects was already a part of the power card script, so I've just extended that implementation to use the same attribute reference style as the new video effects system. So here's the test setup. Uh, we've got a barbarian facing off against a red dragon wormling, and we've also got an axe beak hanging out in the area. Let me bring up the macro we'll be using here. Uh, and while power card supports all kinds of conditionals and rolling dice and all kinds of great features, for the purposes of this discussion, we're just going to stick strictly with the audio and video attribute effects. So we'll assume that this, uh, when we use this macro, the attack uh, rolled and hit the target. Uh, the beginning uh, lines, four lines, just set up the power card itself. We're just going to call it testing. Uh, we have a token ID that specifies that the selected token is the attacker in this case. Uh, we need a target list if we're going to use targeted video effects. Uh, most of the, these things will work without a target list, but anything that references a target has to have a target list tag in the macro. And finally, in 3.7.1, which is the current version out there on Roll20, um, there's a requirement that you have to have an emote line if you're going to use a targeted video effect. Now, I've removed that requirement in 3.7.2 by relocating the code that fills in the token ID. Um, the rest of this macro is potential audio and video effects. And I say potential because right now if we run the macro, and let's go ahead and do that, we'll have the Wormling attack the Barbarian. Uh, we just get a little display up in the corner that says the Red Dragon Wormling attacks. We see the two uh, icons and the testing header. Nothing else happens. Uh, the reason for this is that we have not defined any of these attributes. Uh, audio on attack, audio on hurt effect on attack. We haven't defined any of those on any of these characters. So let's start out, uh, let's say we want to have the dragon roar when he attacks anybody. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll add the audio on attack uh, attribute to the dragon. Open up the dragon's character sheet, go to the attributes tab, click add to add a new attribute, call it audio on attack, and the audio system in power cards uses the roll 20 audio master uh, script to actually play audio uh, so we need to pass it a command line that the roll 20 audio master script will understand and in this case it's minus minus play for the play command followed by a vertical bar followed by the name of the jukebox item we want to play and i've got a jukebox item called growl bite so we will close this window and let's run that macro again, attacking from the dragon to the barbarian. This time we select the barbarian as a target. And we hear a nice growl effect when the wormling attacks. If the wormling attacks the axe beak, the same thing happens. So we've got one audio effect, effect now dependent on the wormling attacking. We haven't changed the macro at all. So what happens if the barbarian attacks the dragon? Well, nothing, because the barbarian does not have an audio on attack effect. It wouldn't make any sense for him to roar like the dragon when he attacks. He would probably have a war cry, something along those lines. So uh, that first attack uh, attribute was on the attacker, uh, as you can see with selected token ID. So the, the token we have selected, that's where it's looking for the attribute. The second audio attribute is on the target. So audio on hurt, let's create that on the barbarian. And again, the same way we come in here, we click add, we give it the name of audio on hurt, and we'll play the ouch scream effect. And save that. Now, go back to the dragon, attack the barbarian. And not only do you hear the dragon roar, you hear the barbarian scream in pain. All right, so again, if the barbarian attacks the dragon, neither one of these effects play because they are not defined uh, on the appropriate tokens. 
If the Axe Beak attacks the Barbarian, however, notice we haven't done anything with the Axe Beak at all yet, uh, he attacks the Barbarian. The Barbarian screams in pain because that effect is, lives on the Barbarian himself. So those are the two audio tracks we're using, and I could define a pain, an on hurt sound for the dragon, and an on hurt sound for the axe beak, and then anybody who attacked any of the three tokens, that sound would be played. Uh, let's go on and look at the video effects because they all work exactly the same way, although video effects have a couple of little quirks with their syntax because of the way the at selected and at uh, target uh, specifiers are passed to the API. So let's go ahead and do the uh, effect on attack. So we want the dragon to breathe a beam of fire when he attacks anybody. So again, we go into the dragon's character sheet. We add an effect, or an attribute, sorry, and we call it, uh, this is going to be an effect that goes from the source token to the target token, and we're gonna play beam fire, which is just the name of one of the built-in roll 20 effects. So we test this again, we attack the Barbarian, and we get a beam of fire, we get the Dragon Roar, and we get the Barbarian Scream. If we attack the Axe Beak, again, we get a beam of fire, we get the Dragon Roar, but no on hurt effect because the Axe Beak doesn't have one. So the syntax that I used for that attribute, the uh, S space T space name of the uh, effect, S stands for source, T stands for target, and you can use one, two, or no token specifiers. If you just put the name of the effect, and we'll go ahead and do that real quick, we'll change the dragon's breath. Instead of ST beam fire, we'll just call it burn fire. If there are no target specifiers, uh, it will assume that the macro or the effect should be played on the token that's using the macro. So now we attack and the dragon himself goes through the play. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but there you go. So we'll change that back real quick. And again, we're back to the normal beam of fire heading towards the target. The last two, uh, we have a on the attacker effect called effect on enemy hit. So this is a visual effect that is played on the enemy based on what the attacker did to them. Uh, so let's go ahead and create that again on the dragon because it's a selected token. And we want to at the target, so T, play the burn fire effect. Save that and go ahead and test it again and attack the Barbarian. Not only do we have a beam of fire now, he bursts into flame. Um, the final effect that we're going to talk about here is on the target. So when the Barbarian gets hit, uh, what happens to him? And in this case, the effect is not exactly going to make sense for the scenario we have here, but uh, we'll go ahead and add it anyway. So the Barbarian, we open up his character sheet instead of the token. And we add an attribute called Effect on Hurt. So this is a video effect that's going to play when the Barbarian gets hurt. Because the Barbarian is the target of the attack, we use T for the target specifier. And then we add, oh, let's say Burst Blood. So now the dragon attacks the Barbarian and all of the different effects we've added should happen. He'll roar, the Barbarian will scream, he'll breathe a blast of fire, the Barbarian will catch on fire, and the Barbarian should have a big blood explosion all around him. Okay. So, if the Axe Beak were to attack the Barbarian, some of the same things would happen because the target audio on Hurt and the target effect on Hurt still exist on the Barbarian. So the Axe Beak attacks, those two will play, but none of the others will because we haven't defined any of those on the Axe Beak. So let's go ahead and do that. Attacking the Barbarian by the Axe Beak. He screams and he explodes in a burst of blood. So, just to, prove, to full circle, the Barbarian attacks the Dragon. Nothing happens. The Barbarian attacks the Axe Beak. Nothing happens. Now you could define 
Audio on attack, uh, audio on enemy hit, effect on attack, on any of these other tokens, and those effects would take place just like they do here. So in fact, let's go ahead and add an audio on hurt to the dragon. And we'll play the growl bite again, because we have it. So now when the dragon gets attacked, by either the Barbarian or the Axe Beak. He'll play his growl effect. He's mad that you attacked him, whatever. Uh, so, as you can see, uh, obviously this is a pretty simple macro. Uh, we don't actually do any checking for did the player attack and hit? Did they armor, you know, beat the armor class of the enemy? Uh, was it a critical hit? Was it a fumble? Uh, none of that. Uh, I do have my macro here i'll pop up in just a second but i want to explain that the point of all of this attribute stuff is so that you can create highly generic macros that your tokens can run without worrying about you know is this a fire-based attack is this a uh, you know a breath of frost um for example i have one of my players uh is a dragonborn uh paladin and he's got lightning breath so I've got a macro set up for his normal attacks uh, and the modifier for his attack. I've got an attribute similar. I don't use the same names, but similar to an effect on attack uh, of a breath of fire uh, because we can change any of these effects. If we go back into the dragon here. We used a beam of fire for his attack, but we can go ahead and change that to a breath of fire. And I don't know why the window, uh, the, Editing windows are so small here, but that's what it is. So now we attack with the dragon, and instead of a beam of fire, we get a fire breath, and we get all the same effects at the same time. So that is essentially uh, the use of the attribute-based video and audio effects. And I'll pop up the macro I use, because uh, if you open up any of these um, character sheets again, and I keep doing that, uh, They'll always have a section for actions. And the way these are referenced internally, the first one is action zero. The next one is action one. The third one is action two. And you can reference everything about these actions based on that number. So if all of your enemies have a simple action zero, and in this case, it's just an attack with a great ax, the same macro can be used to execute that attack for every enemy that shares a basic type of attack and so here's my macro that i use for that and like i said it's a little bit complicated but uh we see the same things in here uh we do do we do have an attack roll um but we also see that there's an audio attribute that the selected token plays its attack zero sound so i use anywhere i have a dollar sign zero reference that means this is the first attack that the npc has so we play the attack zero sound uh, all the time. If the attack missed, we play a potential audio on miss for attack zero. If the attack hit, we play a visual effect on the target, whatever it's on hurt effect was, just like we did with the barbarian and his burst of blood. Um, we play the target's audio on hurt because he might have the scream just like the barbarian did. Uh, we play the attacker's audio on hit sound if he has one uh, we have similar things for a critical hit uh, audio and video effect uh, and a fumble and i think right now this plays a wah 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 sound uh, and finally every time this attack is used we check to see if there is an effect on attack zero video effect for this this is like the dragon's fire breath uh, we play that if it exists but other than that all the same principles apply for this macro and this macro will work for a skeleton's bash for the great axe that the barbarian is wielding for the charge attack of the axe beak uh, anything in that first action slot that is a single damage type can be used with this macro now i do have another macro that is almost identical that just adds the secondary damage type uh, but again with between those two macros i can handle any attack in the zero slot and then i just copy the macros and change their numbers and 
there you go so I hope that is helpful um, in explaining how these new attributes work and uh, we'll see you on the next one